Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my future tech tree analysis series. Um, in this episode we'll be looking at the United States. Uh, we've got the fighters and the bombers. Um, we'll probably be looking at the army fighters and navy fighters for this episode. We'll do the attackers, navy bombers, torpedo bombers and army bombers in the next episode. But um, obviously there's a lot of aircraft here so to try and keep it um, into some sort of manageable time we're split it into two episodes. So without any further delay, let's get started. Now the first aircraft we'll be looking at are the P-40 variants, the B, C, K and N. We've already got the P-40E in the game, so two variants before the P-40E and two variants after the P-40E. Now the P-40B was armed with two 12.7mm machine guns and four 7.62mm machine guns. So quite well armed for um what for the type of aircraft it is. I mean not as well armed as the P40E, obviously, but considering it's probably it's a well, it's an earlier model and probably be a um, lower tier aircraft. It's quite well armed. Um, P40C, not much difference. Same armament, I think, but just um, self-sealing fuel tanks and maybe a few other minor changes. Now the next aircraft, the P40K, was a um, upgraded version of the P40 with the Allison engines, which um, allowed it to go quite a bit faster. Um, I'll think about 362 miles an hour I've got written down um, so quite, yeah quite a lot faster it was much better at higher altitudes lastly we have the P40M which is the last production model of the P40 it um, had a late war Allison engine and the bit behind the cockpit had, um, the rear deck had sort of been stripped down a bit so the pilots had a um, better rearward visibility um, it was armed. With, it still had the six 12.7 millimeter machine guns in most cases. So I have heard of it. Some of these being removed. Um, two of them being removed sometimes. I assume Gaijin will just stick with the six because that's what I've got written down in my books. Um, so yeah, um, probably quite the the first two, the C and the B. Um, but the B will be quite important. It's got quite a lot of firepower. Um, the P-36s don't really get that much firepower until the G version, I don't think. Um, can't remember off the top of my head. But, um, so yeah, that's going to be quite a good um, aircraft in the lower tiers. P-40C just adds a bit more survivability. The P-40K and the P-40N, um, really I think these are going to be quite similar to the E, just like obviously a bit more bit, um, faster, better engines, being able to perform at higher altitudes a bit better. Um, don't think they'd be that much better than the E though, I mean, they've still got the same firepower, um, might have some minor cosmetic changes, and obviously the N has the cut down bit of the back so you can see behind you a bit easier, so that will help in simulator battles somewhat, I'm guessing, but yeah, quite quite looking forward to these, um, nice to have the P40 um, fleshed out a bit, because um, at the moment there's only one variant, although there's something like 12 or 10 different skins you can get for the P-40 which has always struck me as a bit odd for the one aircraft but yeah definitely looking forward to these I mean the B will be very useful in the lower tiers C probably won't add that much and obviously the K and the N will be better for higher tiers although not much higher than the P-40 already is hopefully now the next lot of aircraft we'll be looking at are the P-38 variants the E, F, J and the L now the, the E version of the P-38 was um it was obviously an earlier variant. It had the standard armament of the um 120mm cannon for 12.7mm machine guns. Don't think it could carry any bombs. Um I think the main difference between this and the versions we've got in the game is um or version we got in the game is it had the um weaker engines that only allowed it to go up to 390 miles an hour, which is still very quick, but um I've got the L version. That's going up to 414 miles an hour, so obviously quite uh, not too much slower, but a bit slower. We've then got the P-38F. Um, main difference between the P-38E and the F is that the F could carry about 2,000 pound worth of bombs. So obviously that could be used in the role of the fighter bomber a bit. Um, I don't think the version we've got in game does carry bombs. I might I might be wrong, I can't, but I can't remember off the top of my head. We've then got the P-38J, um, of which the main changes are to do with the electrical systems and I think the radiators have uh, been um, slightly moved um, in deep chin fairings uh, immediately after the propellers and with maximum external fuel load this could have an endurance of about 12 hours. So obviously we're probably not going to be needing those fuel loads but 
maybe the radiators will be helping with the um cooling down of the aircraft. Um well actually a thought. I'm wondering if um this is gonna affect the minimum fuel we're allowed to carry, because um obviously we're allowed to choose how much fuel we can carry in the game, but we have to have a minimum amount. I'm wondering if um if we have the external fuel tanks whether this will, the minimum amount will be upped a little bit. Hopefully not, because otherwise it will affect um the aircraft quite badly, but still something we should keep in mind. Finally we come up to the P-38L, which was the most numerous of all the um P-38 variants. Um it could go a lot faster because it had um better engines. The um Allison V seventeen ten eleven one hundred and eleven one hundred and thirteen or slash one hundred and thirteen, sorry. This allowed it to go 414 miles an hour, and it had the same standard armament, um, like all of them have. Um, bit of confusion. I've got it written down as being able to take two 726 kilogram bombs, but I've also heard it it could take um some rockets. Um, not sure how many how many rockets. Um, something like five rockets on each wing, I think. Um, not sure why um where the discrepancy has come from. Um. I mean, it's mentioned. It's not mentioned in my books, but online it is mentioned that it could take some rockets. So, not sure where that's come from, but possibly we'll be getting rockets with this. Um, overall, I think we're prob these are probably be similar to the P40s in their effect. Um, the lower two, or the um, E and the F being lower tier aircraft than the G, and the J and the L being higher tier than the G. But ultimately, they don't seem to be. Doesn't seem to be that much difference between all of them. Um, they all have roughly the same armament. The only difference seems to be between speed. But um, the B's got listed as having a speed of 390 miles an hour. The L's having a speed of 414. So only something like 30 miles an hour. Not even that difference between all of the variants from the lowest to the highest. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there'll be a bit more differences than that, um, such as the rockets and the bombs. But um. Yeah, um, it's good to have more P-38s again, flesh out that tree, but it doesn't seem like they'd be making that much difference in the game, if I'm honest. Now this next aircraft is the P-43 and was a bit of a mystery to me. Um, I couldn't find it in any of my books and there wasn't really any pictures of it online either. I managed to find one. I actually looked for it last week and couldn't find any, apart from it being one of it being um, hauled into a hangar in which you could only see the wing. But um, I've managed to find this one after about... Well, after t well, I just came on, looked up, and it came up straight away. Don't know why it wasn't there last week, but um, yeah, it was a very good high-performance aircraft, mainly used by the Chinese, from what I can remember from looking online. Um, it was, I think it, I don't think it was really used by anyone else. Um, Australia and the United States, I think, all used it as reconnaissance aircraft. I don't think it was ever used in combat by the Americans or Australians. The Chinese did use it, but it didn't have any. Self seeding fuel tanks, not very good armour. Apart from its high altitude performance, it wasn't that good from what I can understand, and only 272 were really made. It was retired in 1944 by the Chinese, and um, looking at the variants, there's a few different variants, most of them photo reconnaissance. I've got the P43A listed down, which is the um, version which used the R183049 engines. Um, this is quite important because this was used by the Douglas C-47 Dakota transports and obviously they needed the engines more than the P-43s so obviously that made um, producing and getting spare parts of them quite hard. Now its speed's listed as 356 miles an hour, service ceiling of about 10,970 metres, so 11,000 metres. So I've heard of um. Apparently uh, one was used to take a picture of Mount Everest from 13,000 metres, so obviously it could go quite high. Only armed with um, four 12.7mm um, Browning machine guns. Um, don't think this aircraft would be all that good in War Thunder. I mean, not sure where they could put it really. Um, it'd probably be quite a low tier aircraft. I mean, it's a bit of an oxymoron, not an oxymoron, it's a bit of a conundrum because it's a very good out high altitude aircraft. But it's very easy to destroy and it's not very well armed. So logic would say it'd be a good bomber interceptor, but obviously with the lack of armament and armour, it's not going to be that good taking down the bombers. So probably a lower tier aircraft, um, probably not going to do all that great. I mean, it's good they've added it in. It's quite a rare aircraft, so um, hopefully players will be able to use it better than it was used in real life. And 
yeah, not really looking forward to it, but it'd be definitely interesting to have it in the game. Now the next aircraft on our list is the P forty seven D fifteen, which is um important and not important at the same time. Um, this is actually um an evolution from the P forty three, which we were talking about a minute ago. But the D fifteen was the first version that had the that could have the drop tanks installed, and um, and the internal fuel was increased as well. Now obviously we've probably already got that in game because we've got the later variants. Um, this is important because it allowed the American P-47s to escort the bombers into Germany. Not really important for us because the furthest we have to travel is usually about 20 kilometers on a realistic battles. So um, it's still got the same armament as far as I could tell. It may not have things like um, improved armor or um, other improvements that we've already got in the later versions that are in the game already. I um, don't think this is going to really make that much of a difference in game. I mean, it's good to have a few more P-47s, but, but I don't really think it's going to add that much. I mean, surely there must could have been different variants to add. I mean, I haven't really looked into them different variants, so maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, it would have been nice to have something that would have been a bit more different to what we've already got. But still, it's nice to have a few more P-47s in the game anyway. Now, the next lot of um, planes we're looking at are the P-51 variants, the uh, P-51, B, C and H. Now the P-51 actually came about because of an order from the, well not an order, but the British government asking North American Aviation to build the P-40 under licence for them. Um, but they said they could build a much better plane, and it only took them 117 days to produce the NA-73, which was the prototype or original version of the P-40, um, P-51. Um, this is fitted with an Allison engine, um, which wasn't very good over 5,000 metres, so the RAF really used it as a low altitude fighter bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. Um, the U United States Army Air Force ordered it as the P-51 or P-51A. Um, there was a dive bomber called the A-36 which we'll deal with later. And it was only in 1943 that the um, B version came about because of the addition of a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. Um, th this is a bit confusing at this point because the P-51B and P-51C are apparently the same aircraft. It's just one was built in um, a different factory, the C model was built in a different factory. Um, so very, very minor differences between the two. So I don't know why we're getting two basically identical planes. But we then jump forward to the P-51H. Um, this is armed well, um, armed with the usual 6 12.7mm machine guns, like the B and the C versions were. But this was a high speed version, um, able to go about 487 miles an hour. So very fast aircraft, um, that's definitely going to be quite good in the higher tiers. I mean, as usual, it would be um, the B and C in the lower tiers, probably like similar to what the Focke Wolf 190A1 is, um, sort of introduction to the um, class of the P-51s. It would be the P-51H that I think has a, the biggest impact, because um, 487 miles an hour, that's um, pretty fast. Um, I think there's some jets that don't even go that fast. I mean, the Gloucester Meteor could go about um, I've got it written down as 415, so this is very fast. Um, definitely looking forward to the P-51H being added into the game, able to chase down enemy fighters and bombers at high altitude and do enough damage to them, and definitely change things in the higher tier matches, when that, and definitely a welcome addition to the game in general. Now the next plane we're looking at is the P-61. Um, this is a night fighter. Um, as we can see, it could go 366 miles an hour, and it was armed with, um, where is it, 420mm Hispano cannons, and 450 caliber machine guns in the remotely operated turret, turret at the top of the aircraft here. Um, could also carry four bombs um, up to 726 kilograms each, or six um, HVAR rockets. Um, it got a radar set, it's got three crew members, um, and I I think this turret could be um, locked into position to fire straight forward. I don't know if that will be done in the game. There is the that's the P61B. I think they're talking about. There is also a P61C, which is um, a high-speed version, pretty much the same, but it could go up to 400 miles an hour, so do about 34 miles an hour faster than the P61B. Uh, this would be quite a yeah, again quite a fast aircraft. It would definitely be good in the higher tiers, especially the C variant because it will have so much firepower and such such high speeds. I mean, 
400 miles an hour with four 20mm cannons plus a four, four 50 caliber machine guns in the turret. Um, the AI gun is already quite powerful, so this will make them, well, even more powerful. They'll be very hard to take this aircraft down um, from the front. I assume it, the turret can traverse behind them. Um, I mean, I doubt they would sign it, so it couldn't. Um, but yeah, this would definitely be a welcome addition in the to the game. Um, definitely make it easier to take down some of the bombers as well, especially in the higher tiers. Now, the next plane now list is the F-82B, which is a twin Mustang, like the F-82E, which we've already got in game. Um, the F-82E is an escort fighter and uses the like, um, Allison liquid cooled engines. Whereas the F-82B, which is um, based on the XP-82, which was a prototype, um, uses Packard Merlin, Merlin engines. Um, so obviously they've switched over to the um, Allison engines at, between the variants. So e either because of manufacturing problems or the Allison engines being superior. So I'm guessing in the case of the Allison engines being superior, the F-82B will be a bit slower. Um, Armament-wise... Uh, about the same, I think. It, was, it, it has provisions for underwing racks like the um, F-82E we've got in-game. Um, other than that, I don't think there's really going to be much difference. So, just sort of padding out the F-82 um, aircraft, it seems. Um, I suppose it would be good to have as, have around as a sort of enough extra ground attack aircraft, really. Um, because it doesn't really, it's a bit, if it's going to be a bit slower than the F-82E, which I don't know for definite, I haven't got it in any of my books, I'm just going by what I've read it online. Um, if, if it is a bit slower, then it'll probably be more suited for the ground attack role, with the F-82E being um, used to deal with enemy aircraft, but yeah, same, I'm guessing it'll be a similar battle rating and tier to the F-82E, so not particularly um, looking forward to it. Um, not, not, not that it's a bad aircraft, but it doesn't seem like it'll be bringing much extra into the game, if I'm honest. Now, the next plane on that list is the F-84C Thunderjet, which is, um, interestingly, the only army fighter that's been added into the game. Um, it's, as far as I can tell, it's the same armament as the F-84B, six 12.7mm um, machine guns, um, M3 Browning machine guns, I should point out. Um, other than that, the only other difference is, seems to be that it uses um, slightly more reliable engines. Um, now, reliable may not mean better flying speed or manoeuvrability, so I can't really comment on that. I haven't, got really, I haven't really got any books that deal with this yet, so I can't really comment as easily as I'd like because I'm not using online sources. Other than that, um, improved hydraulic and electrical systems, um, I don't think it would be that much different from the F-84C really. Um, probably the same battle rating, or very similar, same tier. Just seems to be padding out the F-84 line. Um, yeah, not really much else to say about this aircraft. Um, it's good to have it in the game, but definitely other aircraft I'm more looking forward to, if I'm honest. Now moving away from the army fighters, we go to the navy fighters, and we start off with the F-3F1 and the F-3F2. Um, as you can see from the picture, the F-3F is um, the first biplane America gets. I don't think they have any biplanes in the game, not even in the reserve aircraft. Uh, now, the um, F-3F 1 and 2 aren't that different from each other. Um, the, the main difference I can see is that the 1 version has the 750 horsepower engine, and the second has a 950 horsepower engine, so F-3F 2 is faster. As far as I can tell, other than that, they've got the same armament. Now, um, I've got the specifications for the F3F3, F3, um, and as far as I can tell, um, the armament was one 12.7mm machine gun and one 7.62mm machine gun, and it could carry 50 kilograms worth of bombs, well, well one 50 kilogram bomb under each wing, sorry. Um, top speed, I've got listed uh, for the last one about 265 miles an hour. So, um, okay-ish speed, I suppose. Um, it's it's just going to be um, padding out the lower tiers. We, um, it'll be good for America to have a biplane finally, but um, other than that, it doesn't really stand out. It just, I mean, sort of similar armament to some of the P-26s, and um, it'll be good to, for, like I said, it'll be good for America to have a biplane in the game, but um, kind of underwhelming as, as far as I can tell. I mean. 
doesn't really seem to have um, been used all that much. Was retired quite early, replaced by the F2A Buffalo. So um, yeah, it's good to, good to have it, but um, doesn't not particularly the plane I'm looking forward to the most, if I'm honest. Now the next plane there, this is the F6F5, and it's an improved version of the F6F3. Has the exact same armament. Um, I've got written down in my book that some of them could take 20 millimeter cannons. I'm going to assume they stick with the Browning machine guns, the six 12.7 millimeter machine guns. Now the F65 Hellcat was improved in that it had a more powerful engine, 2,200 horsepower, while the F6F3 only had a 2,000 horsepower engine. Uh, it's got a speed listed as about. Um, let, me, let me just find it. 380 miles an hour, so very fast for um, propeller plane, um, and quite and it's still got the good arm. And I've also got written down that um, bulletproof windscreen, strength and tail surfaces, that sort of stuff. So hopefully a more robust aircraft. I mean, it's already a robust aircraft, quite hard to take down. So if it's got even more improvements to the um, structure, that could be quite. Um, significant but other than that um just seems like an improved version of the hellcat doesn't like look like it'll really add anything again sort of padding out the f6f variants i mean it's good to have it in the game um just doesn't seem like it'll be adding anything significant to the game as far as i can see so but yeah same probably a slightly higher battle rating but kept within the um its own subsection because um it's quite. It's a good aircraft, but not significant enough to be put in its own little section like the F2A1 or the F2A3. Um, It'll probably be like the F4F, where all the F4F variants are put together. Now the next plane that list is the F4U4C, which is obviously a later variant than the F4U1s that we have in the game at the moment. Now the 4C is armed with four 20 millimeter cannons, and it's the, now the F4U4 um, variant in general is um, different from the F4U1 in that it has a um, 2,100 horsepower engine compared to the 2,000 horsepower engine on the F4U1. Now um, this boosts its speed up to about 448 miles from I think about 418, 417 sorry. Um, it's got a four blade um, propeller. Um, can carry bombs and rockets, obviously. Uh, windscreen was um, flat, bullet-resistant glass, um, which is different from the pexy glass windscreens that they had on the F4U1s. Um, this will probably be a slightly... It'll be a higher tier aircraft than the F4U1, but I don't think it'll be that higher tier. I mean, I don't think it'll be that much different than the F4U1, in all honesty. Um, Probably between the Bearcats and the F4U1C, because they've got similar armament. Um, the F4U1C has um, uh, 20 millimeter cannons as well, so it'll be probably between them. Um, probably between the F4U1C and the F8F1. Um, yeah, it'd be good to have it in the game. Um, sort of um, maybe an upper upper tier three, lower tier four, but yeah, probably not going to have that much effect in on the whole, if I'm honest. But it's still good to have it in the game. Now the next aircraft on our list is the F7F1, the F7F2. Now as we can see they're twin engine aircraft. Um, they were supposed to operate from aircraft carriers but they, the early variants at least, didn't actually operate from aircraft carriers because one they were too big and apparently there was problems with landing the um, aircraft on the carriers. Um, something to do with the arrest of hooks failing. Um, these are quite fast aircraft. Um, I've got written here that it can go 71 miles an hour faster than a uh, Hellcat at sea level. Um, they were quite well armed as well. Um, four 20 millimeter cannons, uh, four 50 ca uh, caliber machine guns. Um, could carry two 1,000 pound bombs and one torpedo under the fuselage. Um, I should point out these specifications are for the 4N, but I think they're the same for the for practically for practically all of the aircraft. Now the F7F1 was a um, fighter bomber, um, and it was um, only 34 were actually built. This is more of a well fighter fighter bomber, like I said. Um, the F7F2 was a um, 
it, I think it was a night fighter possibly. It was a two seat yeah, it was a two seat night fighter. And only very small numbers of these were built. Thirty four for the first variant, the F seven F one, sixty five for the F seven F two N. So they they weren't built in that large amount of numbers. It, um so I don't know if that shows that maybe they weren't as good as they were expected to be. Um, like I said, it could go quite fast, um, faster than the Hellcat. Um, could climb about 23 meters a second. Um, where would these go on the tech tree? Probably, I think they'd probably go after, I have a feeling they might go after the um, Bearcats. Because they're a lot more well armed than the Bearcats. Um, so probably between the Panther and the and the um bear cats um that wouldn't make sense in um i suppose designation um to have the f seven f after the f eight f but um it's the only way I can see it working um probably battle rating of seven something um it's quite fast um well armed um but yeah, I suppose it's up to Gaijin in the end where they put it um quite looking forward to this aircraft um Although I think they're going to have to make the aircraft carriers in the game a bit bigger. That was one of the reasons they couldn't operate from aircraft carriers, at least the early variants, because most of them, most of the aircraft carriers weren't big enough. So, but, so yeah, looking forward to it, but I think it may need some changes to um, allow it to operate as an aircraft, um, yeah, a carrier-based aircraft. But yeah, definitely looking forward to it being added into the game. Now the next aircraft in our list is the F-8F2, um, an improved version of the F-8F1 and 1B that we've already got in game. Now um, this had a um, redesigned engine cowling, taller fins and rudder, and armed with four 20mm cannons, and a more powerful engine, which allowed it to go up to 455 miles an hour, compared to 421 for the F-8F1. Um, so yeah, as far as I can tell, 20mm cannons, still the same amount of rockets and bombs. This would be quite a good aircraft, but again, it doesn't seem to, it just seems like it would be a faster version of the FAF 1B that we've already got in game. So again, probably going to be about the same place as um, the FAF 1B. Slightly, like I said, a bit faster, so it'll probably be about the same, about, well, slightly higher battle rating, probably similar tier. Yeah, it'd be good to have it in the game, but again, seems like it's just sort of padding out um, the existing variants rather than adding anything really new into the into the game. Now, the next and last plane of the U.S. Navy fighters on our list is the F-2H-2 um, Banshee. Now, this was um, in service from 1948 to 1961, and was interestingly the only jet-powered fighter deployed by the Canadian Navy. So, um, yeah, a little interesting fact. Now the variant we're getting is, um, like I said, the F2H2, so not the original F2H1 variant. Now this has improved over the F2H1, um, detachable wingtip fuel tanks, and it could carry 454 kilograms worth of light bombs. And yeah, um, armament-wise, uh, four 20 millimeter cannons, eight 60 pound explosive rockets, or six 500 pound rockets, and 60 pounds of um, rockets along with that. Um, it did use sidewinders in the Royal, in the Royal Canadian Navy, but um, yeah, I'm guessing we're not going to get them. Uh, could go about four, 580 miles an hour, so that's pretty fast. Um, the F9F Panther we've got in game can go about 522. So yeah, definitely a lot faster than that. Um, so the F9F5, um, oh, that's the light, latest variant um, of um, jets in the US Navy tree that goes 568, so 20 miles per hour faster than that. Um, yeah, this would be quite a fast aircraft. Um, yeah, be, seems like it can carry a okay bomb load, um, decent amount of um, armament, um, the four 20 millimeter cannons. Yeah, this would be a good get, good um, plane to add into the game. Um, probably be like one of the last aircraft you could unlock. I'm guessing. Um, but yeah, it'd be definitely something good to um, work towards the higher tiers. And I think it'd be good to have this plane in the game. So that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, my um, thoughts on the fighters being added into the game. Uh, seems like it's mainly um, padding out existing variants and adding anything new into the game. The only new aircraft we're really getting the P-61s, P-43 and the F-7F. 
and the F2H, and um, we're not really getting any new aircraft into the game. It seems to be mainly padding out the um, existing fighter variants. Um, things look a lot more promising for the bombers. We'll be covering that in the next um, episode, but it seems like quite a few bombers have been added. Um, seems like Gaijin have been mainly focusing their efforts there. So, um, yeah, good claims being added, but again, like I said, just sort of bolstering the existing variants. Um, claims I'm looking forward to the most, um, probably, um, quite looking forward to some of the early variants of the, um, P-14, P-38, um, other than that, um, the F-3F will be quite good, but yeah, other than that, nothing that really stands out for me, because it may be the F-2H2, but yeah, nothing really stands out, um, you may have different opinions, you can post what aircraft you're looking forward to in the comments below if you want. Um, also, leave feedback for this episode. Um, leave a like, subscribe if you like watching these videos. Um, so I'll be do releasing the next um, part of this um, tech tree analysis, um, the bomber part, um, soon hopefully. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.